Hello everyone, welcome back to the topical hour. We got some things to talk about before we start with the actual rapid review. So first off, you might have noticed the new intro. I kind of like it, so I think it's going to stick around. Also, you might have expected this week to be a Call of Duty rapid review. But here's the thing, I kind of didn't feel like doing it. That's all the explanation you're getting. Today I'm gonna be rapidly reviewing Spider-Man from 2018. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, he's gone too far. You can't dog the Spider-Man game from 2018. It can't be done. It's the best Spider-Man game ever made and it's probably the best Marvel game ever made. But here's the thing, it's not. Today I have something to fight for and that's my opinion on Spider-Man 2018 not really being all that good. So we're just gonna jump in. Let's get it! Now I'll start this review off by saying that there is value to this game, to this day. And playing it for the first time, it probably feels like one of the better games ever, but it's not. I know it feels that way, but it's not. I promise. Okay, so the first thing I'll address with this game is the good stuff, because there's a lot of it. The first thing anyone talks about after playing this game is web swinging, which I understand. The web swinging was perfected in Miles Morales, but this game still did it first and efficiently. I never feel like I have to fast travel to get anywhere, I never feel like I'm taking too long. Although during scripted chases in the story or other parts of the game, the web swinging is intentionally slow and sluggish, and whatever you're chasing speeds up so that it's always faster than you. I can just feel it whenever I'm in a chase and it's annoying. STOP SLOWING ME DOWN BEFORE I BREAK MY CONTROLLER! Then there's the combat of this game, which is pretty good. A lot of people that played this game for the first time said that you can really feel Spider-Man's hits, but I don't really agree with that. I only think when you're in the air or doing a finishing move that the hits feel impactful and genuine. Any other time, Spider-Man uses his feet to kick his enemies, and he rarely punches. But the actual controls are good. This is another game that I've played through completely, including the DLC, and I played through it on the hardest difficulty. This isn't a flex by the way, I just think that superhero games usually need the hardest difficulty to feel more fun. But the point is that the combat systems feel smooth for the most part. I like the gadget system, I like the dodging and perfect dodge system from the skill tree. Side note, I will say that this game does have a pretty useful skill tree. It doesn't feel completely essential to a playthrough, but it, all the skills feel like little perks. My favorite part of the combat system has got to be focus, because you can heal yourself or instantly take down an enemy, and I just find that kinda cool. I also really appreciate that almost all of the suits in this game are free. I genuinely love that the devs were just like, they bought the game, let's give them a few good suits. But then you also get 9 bonus suits from the DLC. I just feel like this game punishes you the least for not buying the DLC. Unlike other games. <clears throat> Arkham Knight. This game feels motivated towards letting the player have fun in the way that once in a while you get that teacher that's motivated to teaching. But, okay, this game does not get off scot-free on the combat because there's a few issues. First off, aerial combat feels kind of annoying. Flying enemies will just punch you out of the air and I find them just as annoying as brutes, but they get you at flying long range, so they're even more annoying. And don't even get me started on the DLC minigunners. Like imagine the MCU Spider-Man that can stop cars at 60 miles an hour no sweat getting punched by some regular flying guy. And I don't want to hear any vulture lovers, okay? He's a different case with all his tech. I just feel that the Spider-Man is a lot weaker than any of the other Spider-Men from the movies or comics. But that's also okay because just about every superhero game makes the hero a little weaker to make them less of a caricature and more of a character for the player to play through. The only exception to this rule is like, Deadpool. Another problem in the combat is the boss fights. This game is the Spider-Man game with the least interesting boss fights, I can say that for sure. Or at least it doesn't get much worse than this game. I liked the duel of boss fights, they were okay, but they felt like filler so we could get a good Sinister Six storyline going. And I don't think literally any of the Mr. Negative fights are fun. There's only like three of them and none of them are very entertaining. Parts of them are okay, like the one hit enemies or the different attacks Mr. Negative uses, but they're just implemented weirdly and it doesn't feel fun or challenging in the fight. And that goes for the duel fights too. The only unique things that come from either of the duel fights is the aerial combat that comes from Electro and Vulture. That was the only time aerial combat combat felt even a little bit smooth. Boss fights in this game suck a nut! And with this super smooth transition, we are on to stealth. This game's stealth is basically flawless. It'll always be the coolest thing to me that the game will literally just tell you whether or not it's dangerous to incapacitate an enemy at any given time. Impact web is definitely the go-to if you've been spotted and need to stop someone from sounding an alarm. I can't think of a single time I've used trip mines in stealth. I usually just hit enemies with them for an instant takedown in combat, but there's still a cooler gadget. I think the most out of place gadget in this game is the anti-gravity, which chances are you probably won't even acquire it until after the story ends, so uh... So what was the point of that? It's also worth mentioning that Spider-Man's gadgets in this game are handled well, the other characters are not. And that leads us into my real complaints about this game. 
literally everyone that's not Spider-Man. So this complaint isn't really anything original, but I'll still mention my problems with this part of the game. See, Mary Jane has not ever had a perfect comic book adaptation to date. This along with Tom Holland's MJ are okay, but I don't want to play through an okay character. I just want to play through Spider-Man. You know, in the game, Spider-Man. So the only gadgets you get as Mary Jane are her camera, sure, whatever, some distraction lures, a Spider-Man instant takedown, and also a taser for her last outing. Actually, the taser's fine, even though that's not how tasers work, it's, it's fine. Like I said, this game handles combat integrated stealth well, when you can actually fight back against your enemies. The Spider-Man instant takedown is kinda stupid and wasn't integrated well animation-wise. I mean, everyone knows this, but Spider-Man just kinda disappears from the ceiling when he's done incapacitating an enemy. Like, I guarantee almost every single person that played this game the first time looked up to see where he would go. They should have just had a fixed camera and animation for MJ so he couldn't look up until he was finished taking an enemy down. I'm not saying I can make a video game better than these people, but uh, hey god, can you hear me? Just let me play a Spider-Man for the whole game! Miles Morales is where the cracks really start to form in this game. Now, I like that he's in this game, I like that the story sets up his game and plot, and I like that he's more than just background noise, but that comes with a little asterisk because he shouldn't have been a playable character. Like, his only mechanic is some hacking device. Basically, I'm saying that I don't need watchdogs in my Spider-Man game, okay? If he was just in cutscenes, or maybe if we got to play with him once, like at the ceremony bombing or during the rhino chase, it would have added greater gravity to that part of the game rather than just throwing in these segments for no reason. And same with the MJ levels, except I like the instant spider takedown and taser levels, so we can keep both of those if we really want to. I swear, these non-Spider-Man segments of the game are like the flashbacks in The Last of Us Part 2. You get one, and it feels kinda cool, but then they just don't stop. More on that when that review comes out, by the way. So that pretty much wraps up the gameplay. Now we have what people consider the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Allah, the story. Now I'll run through it nice and quick so you can see the flaws for yourself. The game starts off with Spider-Man waking up to some police chatter of Wilson Fisk being sieged for his crimes. Zip, zap, zap, and Peter goes in to get him. But on the way to prison, Fisk is basically like, Hey, you need me in this city. I keep things in order. Okay, bro, with the Avengers Tower in the background, sure, bro. But I guess he was right because these dudes called the demons start hurting innocent people and moving in on Fisk's territory. Peter investigates, finds MJ coincidentally, and then they both discover that Fisk and Martin Lee and Norman Osborn are all connected. Meanwhile, Dr. Otto Octavius, Peter's boss scientist or something, I don't know, is continually making developments on his prosthetic tech because he wants to change the world. Where does he get the money to pay Peter and continue his experiments? Well, actually, he called in a bunch of favors, so. And then, skipping over some stuff, this one ceremony gets bombed and sadly, Miles Morales' dad dies, but it's fine anyway because it'll turn him into a better superhero later. After that, there's a prison break, blah blah blah, devil's breath, but then, we get to the final act of the story and that's fighting the Sinister Five. Sorry, I just hate Martin Lee. Okay, but in all seriousness, everything leading up to this is really, really good. Like, flawless. We have a good side build up with Otto so he can take the seat as the main antagonist, even though I think Martin Lee should have been more established as a side villain. I also think Fisk was a big part of the story until the writers uh, forgot about him, which sucks too, because it's not like he has the easiest character model in the world to make. But more to the point is that this game's story is on point, but the gameplay feels like it's wrapped around it. Another big factor in this game's diminishing value is that it has an almost no replayability value whatsoever. When it comes to New Game Plus, there are still annoying tutorials in the beginning, and the game doesn't feel like it was changed at all for New Game Plus. There's also nothing to do once you've done a lot of the open world stuff once. It's slightly tedious the first time, but doing it more than once feels like a bit of a chore. Especially when they, at times, pause this game's story just to shove you into Taskmaster's challenges, or Black Cat's stakeouts, or Crime Towers, or Harry's research labs. It doesn't feel very natural to me. But there is something that fixes all of these things, but you're gonna have to shell out a few bucks for it. The DLC are the best part of this game. The best story as its own little thing. For example, the Devil's Breath storyline felt the need to try to make itself grand and overarching but this story feels like a nice little quest to find out if Spider-Man as a kid with Black Cat, find out how to stop Hammerhead, and find out what's going on with Silver Sable. It's like a wild goose chase, but fun. New suits are added, and these DLC aren't short either. When I first got them, I thought it would only take me a few hours, but it took me like three days to get every little collectible. I think this may be my favorite DLC of all time, especially because it carries over all three packs. It just adds so much characterization to the people in the story, I just love it. It doesn't add much gameplay-wise other than types of enemies and mobsters, and those little spider drone levels, which I guess is enough. But I just love what they add to the story. It's refreshing after the main story, where we only focus on one thing. Okay, I feel like this is getting a little long for a rapid review, so I'll put all my thoughts on the table. The gameplay is pretty good. It does a good job of building and enhancing upon what previous Spider-Man games have done. 
the story could be better, I just think that the villains feel a bit forced so we could get to 6, and also I would have traded Scorpion a million times over if we could have gotten Mysterio. It would have made the hallucination segment have a bit more meaning. So the gameplay is solid, the story felt a bit weak at times, and the segments where we don't play a Spider-Man feel god-awful, especially on a new game plus playthrough. In fact, don't even bother playing this game more than a few subsequent times, it gets infuriating. And that's about it. This game is far from perfect, but it also is hard to complain about because everything in it is, if not perfect, at least pretty solid. There's not really a bad part of this game. And I didn't even talk about the gloss and beauty of New York, the fact that it changes depending on what state of danger the city's in, or anything along those lines. As for whether or not the game is worth buying, it's hard to say. If you like other superhero games or even Spider-Man games, then you'll probably like this game. I know this one specifically was just me obsessing over a lot of the problems I had in this game, so it could go either way. But if you go with your gut and with the general populace, this game's worth it. And if you want a little bit more afterwards, then the DLC is where you want to go. Oh, and uh, one more thing I have a problem with in this game is all of the talk about how Peter and MJ broke up. Like, I don't care. Seriously, their relationship is so boring when it's tested. Anyway, this game gets a 7.5 out of 10. It's pretty good, but I definitely want to see if we can get some improvements in the second game next year. Like I always say, this video took a pretty long time to make, so if you would please subscribe, that'd be pretty cool. Or not, that's fine. Play nice, people.